Hello everyone, today I'm going to film my friend Amy that is going to make a roast and mashed potatoes. Unfortunately I had to cut out the sound because we were chatting. Um, here is the ingredient list. If you need any longer to read it, feel free to pause it right here. So we are going to start by preheating the oven at 350 Fahrenheit. And once you did that, we're going to need three carrots and we are going to peel the carrots until they are nice and clean. say that these are three medium carrots. Once you peel them, cut off the tips. And once we cut off the tips, we are going to cut the carrots in equal pieces. Depending on how big your carrots are, they might be a little bit bigger or smaller than the ones that you see in the video. There we go. And that's it. So we're going to move the carrots aside and take the sirloin steak out of the pot so that you can put the carrots in the pot. Just spread them out evenly over the bottom of the, the pot. We're using a Dutch oven. And then we're going to add some water to the carrots until they are just covered with water. And then we're going to use a little bit of thyme, or a lot, depending on what you like. And then once you added a thyme in it, you're going to drizzle some olive oil over the top of the sirloin steak and also on the bottom. Just rub it in with your hands until it's spread evenly. And then you put it back in the pan. This is about one and a half to two pounds, which is a perfect amount of meat for about three people. So we're going to add some salt to the top and then just flip it over. And then we're going to put some salt on the bottom as well, as well as pepper. I would highly recommend to use fresh pepper and uh, freshly grounded salt because that makes all the difference, and it definitely tastes a lot better that way. Uh, instead of using pre-crushed pepper and table salt, so we're gonna add some basil to that. And then we're also going to add some uh, garlic. So we're just chopping up the garlic garlic is very tasty in the food. And then we're going to use about seven to eight cloves, but it all depends on how much garlic you really like. You can add less, you can add more, which, uh, which counts for everything you add to the sirloin steak when it comes down to herbs. So we're going to use our little garlic squeezer and we're going to squeeze the garlic around the steak. Not on top of the steak because that might make it um, burned and brown when you put it in, once you put it in the oven, which can leave a bitter taste. So we're just going to put it on the carrots. And 
The reason why we're not using diced onion is because we're going to use a pack of Knorr onion soup. So we're now spreading the dried onion soup around it, which is going to make it nice and flavorful. And it's going to absorb a little bit of the water as well. It will thicken a little bit. And then we can use the water on the bottom as the base for the gravy once it's done cooking. So we're just going to put the lid on top. And the whole dish is going to go into the oven on the middle rack for about an hour. It depends on how big it is, but we're going to cook this one for an hour. There we go. And it was snowing outside in the meantime. So now we're going to move on to the potatoes. We got three big regular white potatoes. So we're just going to uh, peel these until they are nice and clean. You can use more potatoes if you have a different size potatoes. Um, we like to use these because they kind of fall apart pretty quickly, which is good for mashed potatoes. So we're just going to cut these um, into cubes, but we still actually have to wash these. So after you wash them, uh, we're going to continue cutting them into uh, large size cubes. And then once that is done, you put them in the pot that you're going to cook them in. And it's important to wash the potatoes before you boil them so that you don't get the starchy residue which you really don't want uh, once you're going to mix up the potatoes. So just wash them first, then put them in the pot, and then add a generous amount of water to it. We usually like to use like hot water so that it boils faster. And we are going to boil these potatoes for about half an hour or longer. And before... Um, we're going to close the lid on the potato pot. We're going to add some more uh, raw garlic, about four cloves, because it will add a very nice flavor to the potatoes while they are boiling. So just uh, clean four more cloves of garlic. This is fresh garlic, so it's a little bit harder to uh, it's a little bit harder to uh, to clean. Um, you could technically also use garlic from a jar, but fresh garlic is definitely recommended with this. So now we're going to put the garlic in the garlic press again, and we just crush it and add it to the water, and that's it for the potatoes. So now we are going to continue with another recipe for to eat with steak, which is Yorkshire pudding, and feel free to pause the video if you need to read the ingredients. So we're going to start off with four eggs, and we're going to mix them together well in a metal uh, jar, or not jar, in a metal bowl whisk them together well. And then once that's done, we're going to fill up uh, two cups. We're going to measure out two cups of milk out of our bag. We're going to use the milk from our bag because we're Canadian. And then you add that to the egg mixture and then you mix everything together again. And then you also use two cups of flour. So one cup. And 
the second cup. Just add both of them to it. There you go. And then we're going to mix all of it together again until it becomes a very smooth mixture with uh, with no little pieces of flour. Just mix it until it's nice and smooth, just like that, and until it reaches a slightly thicker consistency. And then you just add some freshly grounded salt to it. And don't be shy on the salt, you can use quite a bit. Obviously not too much, but it's better to use slightly too much than not enough. Now you mix that in as well. And after that, we are going to use some olive oil in our baking pan. And just spread that out with your fingers, or you can use a brush if you prefer that. And then just make sure that it's spread out everywhere on the edges. And then um, look for um, a plastic spatula so that you can scrape everything out of the metal bowl and just pour it into the baking pan just like that. You can make it nice and clean and the mixture will smoothen itself out automatically in the baking pan. So that's it. Nice and clean. Everything in the baking pan. And we are also going to bake the Yorkshire pudding for about an hour. So we're going to put that also on the middle rack in the oven right next to the roast. And the way how you check Yorkshire pudding in the meantime is by using a wooden stick and when you poke it in and it comes out clean, you know that it's ready. So it's now 50 minutes later, so let's check up on the steak. That is looking really, really good. And the Yorkshire pudding is rising nicely. And it smells absolutely delicious. I wish that you guys would be able to smell this. So that's almost ready. Um, now we're just going to prepare some, a cup of water with three tablespoons of flour to make it, um, to create thickness that we're going to add to the gravy later on once the steak comes out of the oven. And in the meantime, we are going to peel some more garlic because we're also going to make some green beans. Um, we're just using our garlic squeezer again, and you can use as much garlic as you want, but I think we are using about five cloves of garlic here. And it's important that the oil is not too hot, because that will burn the garlic very quickly. So if you notice that the oil in the pot is getting too hot, make sure that you take it off the heat source. and just stir the garlic uh, nicely in some olive oil. And once you think the garlic looks slightly browned, we are going to grab our green beans, little string beans, and we're using almost an entire bag of frozen green beans from President's Choice, but you can of course also use fresh ones. So once you've added it to the garlic, we're going to uh, splash a little bit more olive oil on the top. And 
And the reason why we are doing that is so that the salt and pepper will stick better to the green beans. So just add um, salt to taste, freshly ground salt, and freshly ground black pepper as well. So you have a lot going on right now. You have the Yorkshire pudding in the oven and your steak. And now we're making the green beans. But don't get too overwhelmed. Just do one thing at a time and everything will be done properly. So we're just going to let that cook and we're going to prepare some bowls to put the vegetables in once they are done. And also uh, the, the steak itself sirloin steak. So we're taking this out. It's about one hour and ten minutes later. And we're going to let the Yorkshire pudding in the oven for a bit longer to get it nice and crunchy on the outside and the side, the top and the bottom. So we're going to take out the steak now. Look at how delicious that looks like. So we're taking out the steak. It looks, it looks, definitely looks done. So just put that on a plate aside. And it would be best to have a, a meat thermometer so that you can measure the inside temperature, but we don't have that. So we're just going off by the way how it looks. So we're taking out the carrots, um, put them in a separate bowl, and now we're going to check up on our green beans. They're getting nice and crispy and brown. You don't want to have them burned, but brown is definitely good. So that looks about done. We'll just let that, let's put that aside, and now we are going to put our gravy through a strainer to make it nice and smooth to take out the little pieces of onion and there we go she uh, we're just using the steamer as a strainer and you can see that the onions stayed behind and you have a perfectly smooth marbly kind of gravy. So we're just gonna put that on the stove for a little bit longer. And um, now is the time to grab your little uh, cup with water and flour that you prepared a little bit earlier. And just wait until the gravy starts to simmer. And uh, once it starts to simmer, you can add the flour and water mixture to the gravy and it's important that you don't put up the heat source too high and while you're making this just keep stirring it so that it doesn't get stuck on the bottom just keeps whisking it so that it stays so that it stays smooth and when it reaches the thickness that you like it on just take it off the heat source and there we have it. So we're going to put all of this in a gravy boat that is insulated so that the gravy will stay nice and warm. Of course that's not a necessary step but it would definitely, it's definitely nice when you do have it. So just pour the gravy into the gravy boat. There we go. Make sure that you take everything out of it. And um, it's a perfect amount of gravy for three people, but you will most likely have some leftover still. Okay, that's the gravy. Now we uh, put the potatoes in the strainer. It's quite a lot of potatoes. 
And we're going to put the uh, mashed potato or the potatoes back into the pot and we're going to add a generous amount of butter to it, which you would definitely need to um, reach the, um, the right consistency. And then we are also going to get the mixer. You could theoretically, obviously, do this by hand, but we are going to use the mixer. And we're just adding uh, two scoops of sour cream to it as well, because uh, it will become very creamy this way, very tasty. And last but not least, despite the fact that we boiled it with some garlic, we are also going to add some fresh raw garlic to it. So we're using three cloves of garlic here. If you don't like garlic, of course, you can just leave it out altogether. And if you like garlic even more so than we do, you can, of course, add more garlic to it. So that's that. And then we're going to use the tarragon. And just spread it out over the potatoes. And it's quite a bit of tarragon, but of course you can use any amount that you prefer. And then we put a splash of milk in it as well. Just add some milk to it. And then we, it's ready to be mixed all together. So there we go. Just mixing it evenly. And you can mix it basically for as long as you want. We like it pretty fluffy. So we've mixed it for a while. And that is how it will look like. So now we're going to take out the Yorkshire pudding from the oven. And that's how it looks. It's going to deflate, uh, which is fine. That's how it's supposed to be. Looks very nice and crunchy and brown. Looks perfect. So we just took off the wires from the... Just taking off the wires from the steak. And... Now we are going to cut the meat so that we can see how it looks like. So it came out pretty good. Um, the smell is absolutely delicious and the meat was very juicy, even though it might not look like it on camera. But it turned out very, very juicy. It's definitely better to overcook your meat than undercook because you don't want to uh, eat something that is completely raw. However, we did come to the conclusion that we probably could have cooked this little piece of meat a little bit shorter. Um, so lesson learned, but you never know how it's going to turn out depending on the weight and the type of cut that you get as well. The one that we used was a sirloin tip steak. But it turned out perfect for us. We absolutely enjoyed it. Ended up being very juicy and very tasty. So, we are all ready for dinner. And there you have it. Um, Please give the video a like if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment um, if you have anything on your mind you would like to share. I would like to thank you so much for watching and I'm sending you much love and I'll see you again soon.